All right. Uh, this week, we want to look at um, uh, security or information security management. Again, as usual, you can always see my um, uh, contact information on the next screen here. Again, you can follow us on uh, YouTube or LinkedIn or Twitter. Our normal usual uh, caveat. So here I want to describe management functions with respect to InfoSec. And we look at issues of governance. Uh, what are the roles of development maintenance? Uh, also think about uh, what are called security blueprints. And we're definitely going to look at also frameworks. So basically an information system program has to begin with policies, uh, standards and practice. So we say usually management has to put these frameworks in place before the even the technical uh, individuals can put it uh, or implement it, right? So when we talk about infosec management, we look at what is our, our team's goal. So, but the primary focus of IT group is basically to make sure we have an efficient and effective uh, processing of uh, information. Whereas for I infosec group, we want to of course ensure the so-called uh, CIA triad of uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So when we're looking at uh, functions such as uh, we do have what's called the six P's for information security management, which is planning, policy, programs, protection, people, and then uh, project management. So that's the six P's we talk about uh, as it relates to the unique functions, right? But also uh, as it relates to planning and governance, we, strategic planning helps us set a long-term direction for what the organization is going to do. And of course, uh, leadership is involved in this. And of, uh, what about our objective is? Our objective must address at the highest level of the organization, uh, the management teams in order to be effective and obviously have what's called a sustainable approach. Because if senior management doesn't buy into whatever you're doing in information security, it's gonna be like a exercise in a futility. So we have what's called the ISO 2701, uh, different uh, 2700 series. This has to do with the standards for governance of uh, information security. We talk about these six uh, high-level action-oriented uh, governance principles, including establishing organization-wide uh, information security, uh, adopting a risk-based approach, setting the directions for investment decisions. So when you see this... Uh, governance process, you go all the way from the uh, left side to the right side, including executive management and going all the way to what I call uh, uh, the stakeholders. So this is from uh, uh, ISO standards. But for governance roles and uh, responsibility, we see on here, for example, on the left side, I'm looking at what is the responsibility uh, to have uh, uh, good uh, uh, governance and on the right side, I have functional role examples. So when we're looking about information security goals, I'm thinking about strategic alignment of, of InfoSec with the business strategy to make sure that we're supporting our organization objectives. And of course, risk management, resource management, performance measurement, uh, value delivery. Uh, so this is a very important uh, principles. So management from communities of interest, we need to look at policies, uh, which are the basis for all information security, uh, planning, design, and uh, deployment. And of course, the policies are what really directs how issues should be addressed and the technologies that we need to use in information security. So our policies are basically uh, the least expensive controls to execute, but they are most difficult to implement uh, properly. So we do always say policy is the foundation for uh, planning. Here you look at this uh, chart in here. I always say to my clients or the, the, the students is that we have policies at the highest level and then procedures at the basic level. So you have policies, standards, guidelines, and procedures. Uh, guidelines are maybe like call it suggestions or recommendations, but policies, standards, and procedures are mandatory. So our procedures are basically step by step. Uh, the policies are basically sanctioned by management. And of course, our standards may be detailed, the minimum specifications that are required for like compliance, such as maybe PCI DSS, FISMA, HIPAA, uh, 
but our, our practices we must also have to do with the industry government and of course regulatory uh, uh, entities right so here this is a big definition our uh, relationship between uh, all uh, five of them so example would be policies is use strong password our procedure would be in order to change your password first click the window start button and then you go on and on and then the guidelines will recommend that you don't use family or pet names or dictionary names so you can see how all of this uh, interrelate all right so if i was doing a knowledge check the question would be for, uh, as follows a detailed statement of what must be done to comply with policies sometimes used as rules governing policy compliance known as in this case the answer would be standard all right so again continue with saying that policies are the foundations for planning so in terms of enterprise uh, security uh, policies just understand that uh, executive level documents are usually drafted by like the cio if i'm looking at the organizational chart you might have to look at the previous video to see where the cio fits in the organization, but generally you have the CEO and the CIO, and under the CIO you have like the Chief Information Security Officer or the CISO, right? Um, here also we look at the overview of the corporate uh, philosophy on security, but this uh, chart talks about the component of an enterprise uh, ISP, you have your statement of policy, sorry, statement of purpose, you've got your uh, elements, the need, uh, and then, of course, responsibilities and rules, and then find references to other standards. So you also have what's called uh, ISSP, which is the issue-specific security policies. They tend to address more areas of technology, and these ones require frequent updates. Again, these are the component statement of policies, authorized access, prohibited use of equipment, system management, violations of policy, uh, policy review and recommendation, and of course, uh, issues of limitations of uh, liability. We will now have also what's called system-specific policies. In this case, we will um, have two groups like managerial guidance and technical specifications. But the whole idea is this is supposed to be like uh, the standards and procedures when we use, that we should use to configure or maintain our systems. So how do we develop effective uh, security policies here? We need, to be do, we need to do the following. We must obviously have development, uh, dissemination, and then reading it, and it must be read by <clears throat> all uh, employees essentially, right? So if you have policy that nobody's reading, it's like um, useless. So policy management has to do with um, how do we make sure that uh, uh, we are doing uh, reviews, we are having procedures and practices. <clears throat> we have policy and revision dates. So we have something called Security Education and Training Awareness Program, which is called SETA as initials, right? So every organization must have a security education, training, and awareness program. Uh, security security ed education is very critical because everyone needs to be trained and aware of what we're doing in our organization would that be DHS, NSA, uh, designated policies, right? So security training is important. Security awareness program, this is, sometimes you say, how do you get organizations to understand that this is very, very important? Uh, they need to create a budget for it. So what we see here is that it's the least frequently implemented, but is the most beneficial programs. Because the more employees are aware, as well like something like phishing or recognizing social engineering, this is the best procedure for uh, reducing the numbers of employees that click on the links they should not uh, click on, right? So let's look at comparative frameworks for SATA. You see something called attribute level. I have objective teaching methods, assessment, and the impact frame. I'm trying not to go through the slide, but you can pause the video and look at the slides and uh, see what I'm talking about. Again here, um, uh, knowledge check the process that seeks to teach members of the organization what security is and what the employees should do in some situation is known as in this case you can probably guess security awareness so information security blueprint models and frameworks so if you're going to be cyber security or if you're working for an organization you should kind of have an idea so a blueprint is basically 
what gives us the basics for the design, selection, and implementation of our security elements. So it's like a house. You want to build a house, you need a blueprint for the house, right? One is the ISO 2700 series. It's one of the most referenced security models. The purpose of the ISO 27000 is basically to give recommendations for information security management with the goal of uh, getting uh, certifications, right? This has kind of, of strong uh, starting point for you to develop security policies for your organizations. So these are major process steps involved in them. Uh, some of the sections, again, you got a uh, forward introduction scope all the way down to cryptography and then compliance. So besides the ISO 27000, we also have the NIST security modules. So NIST always have what I call SPs or special publications, like SP 800 talks about introduction to information security, and then uh, SP 800-30 would be on uh, conducting security awareness. Uh, you got different ones. Again, another approach is to look at documents from Computer Security uh, Resource Center of NIST, and it's like, we we'll call it a treasure trove of information for you to read, to get aware, right? So there's also this one, uh, NIST Special Publication 814, uh, Security Supports the Mission of the Organization, and it's an integral part of uh, sound management. It's a very good document to read. Uh, I You can send me an email if you want a copy, but these are easily available uh, online. Uh, again, we also have the NIST the Risk Management Framework. It has to do with uh, managing risk in the organization. How do we reduce the risk and what is our approach? So we also have the NISC Cybersecurity Framework. Uh, the setting uh, we we'll call uh, core activities like identify, protect, detect, it goes through a series. Again, you should be aware of this uh, framework uh, in cybersecurity. So you have different tiers. You have like tier one about partial, tier three about repeatable. These are three fundamental components that you should be able to uh, glean and understand for your own enterprise, right? So there are seven steps in this uh, cybersecurity framework, including prioritizing and scope orient uh, current profile. So what are sources for cybersecurity framework, including uh, includes the uh, CERT, the federal agency, the International Association of Security uh, uh, professional consultants, which is actually a good body to belong to. It's not cheap. It's about uh, $400 uh, dollars to be a member. So let's look at what is called uh, sphere of security, which is part of the foundation for security frameworks. Right? You have different levels of control. So there are three controls that you need to be aware of, managerial controls, operational controls, and technical controls. So the managerial controls, you will also hear it being referred to as administrative controls. They give you the direction and the scope. Operational controls is the physical security. And of course, technical are what you use technology to apply, which would be like um, access control list, firewall rules. Uh, okay, good questions in here. This information security safeguards uh, that focus on lower level planning, deal with the functionality of the organizational security, disaster recovery planning, incident risk, uh, response planning, CETA program. These are collectively known as operational security. All right. So this is a good uh, ch uh, chart on uh, spheres of security. Just go back and look at everything from uh, the same education training awareness. Uh, for the employees on the on the right side here, all the way to redundancy monitoring uh, systems. So there is a theory called uh, defense in depth. So defense in depth just means means I'm going to layer my security. So maybe if you breach through one one uh, layer of security, you have to get to the next one. I right? think about how when you see like movies, you see uh, somebody's trying to break into a bank. The bank has maybe you got to go through uh, some laser. And then you got to go through the uh, touch pad. And you have to now go through the vault. So it's like laser security, right? Before you can get to maybe what you're trying to do. So this is a good example about uh, security in depth in here. So in this case, you have what's called a demilitarized zone. We call this a now a screen subnet. So you can go from there. And then before you can get into the enterprise environment. Right. All right. So, uh, Questions for you to think about is um, 
uh, the six P's, think about the six P's, what do they mean? Uh, which of these elements uh, stood out for you as you listen to the six P's? All right, so that's a summary of what we've done today. It's a lot of things, but what I need you to be able to remember are the six P's. Remember the three manager, uh, man, uh, sorry, the three security controls, managerial, operational, and technical. At the very least, get those. And then also the frameworks from the NIST frameworks, the regular cybersecurity framework to the um, NIST uh, framework on uh, risk uh, management. These are important concepts. Again, like the video, uh, subscribe if you want. But more importantly, post questions for me so that I know that. Uh, uh, you're following or did you understand what I was covering or what concept seems uh, more complex? Because I will not be able to cover a uh, 200 page text materials in a few minutes, but I will just give you the highlights. The best approach to some of these videos is maybe stop, look at the screen, digest the information before you uh, uh, continue. All right, so enjoy the rest of the course or the rest of my videos and um,